Happy Black History Month. All my melanated people, my brothers and sisters, everybody who's African, black, all kinds of black. Happy Black History Month. Okay. We are back again with episode two of the Culture Conversation to uplift and empower and wake up black America. I was watching the news this morning and there was a situation with a psychiatry professor trying to get people to stop sharing this misinformation and share the truth and wake up. And he over there in Florida. You can't make these motherfuckers uh, listen to you. They're not going to get it until something bad happens to their own. Then you see everybody, oh, everyone's all over the place looking for motherfucking Amber or whoever. When the motherfucking shit been happening to us, don't nobody give a fuck. Today I'm going to talk about, and we're going to speak on the mental health of the black man. Okay? So let's foreshadow for a little bit. September 29th, my father was shot and killed by the Louisiana State Police. They knew he had problems. Allegedly, I don't know if they knew all of the story or not. He was messing with some wonder bitch trick who went through thousands of dollars of his money after being released from prison for 25 years. But the mental health of the black man is not to be disrespected, is not to be torn down, and is not to be played with. So the streets say he caught her in bed with a man who got him a job offshore, keeping him away from her. Walked in on him. Allegedly, he beat his ass, he ran off, and he pistol whooped her ass, and a gun went off. Motherfucking munchkins were around. And so then, they had to file charges. But it's no way in the world if you didn't kill anybody. The police hunt somebody down that fast, even if they're on parole. Some just don't sit right with me. So, we fast forward to September 29th, 2022. I'm at work. I don't know what's going on. They come to me for work to tell me what had happened. And I'm going to just say they. And lo and behold, what's important to me is they tried to reason with him. He said he wasn't going back to prison. He ended up losing his life and his soul behind some bullshit. He on a high speed chase. He get out the car. They can't catch him on foot. They drive up in their cars and all the other kind of shit. U.S. Marshals, Louisiana State Police catch up with him. Shoot him multiple times as the death certificate says. And then, motherfucker, there's some other shit nobody want to release. Because I go to the funeral home and unzip the bag and they say, well, coroner tells me because I'm his only son uh do you have any questions i said no not at this moment his clothes weren't with him because they were soiled in blood okay yet again he didn't kill nobody didn't kill didn't list didn't rape didn't take from nobody we're talking about the situation at hand but the death certificate says multiple shot gun wounds Homicide. Okay. An attorney says the police have immunity. Don't you know that every law that gives you the right to bear arms, there's a law that gives them the right to shoot your ass down. Keep up to your motherfucking asses. The Constitution is the white man's Bible. Motherfuckers do all kind of shit. The Me Too shit, the 
pedophilia in the Catholic Church, shit, all kind of shit. But the Constitution is the white man's language. It's his, it's his Bible. It's her Bible. So let's keep going. Get to the funeral home. Buy a suit and everything. Lo and behold, I see this man is black. And I'm talking about puffy. I can see part of his head where an incision was made. Funeral home lady rubbed the head, I guess, to make it look like it's just stitched back up or whatever. And I'm thinking, okay, what else, what, what else is I turn this way on the cassocks as you can see the casket open, the body. And I see Emmett Till, y'all. But you see, they did an intensive autopsy to cover their tracks. Okay? I'm a brown-skinned man. He was a brown-skinned man. When he was dressed up for the final viewing at the funeral home before I proved everything, he was a dark-skinned man. I said, well, did you put brown skin makeup on? He said, yeah, but this is due to trauma. And also, part of his face was unrecognizable. Somebody not tell the truth. And I'm not falling for the bullshit. The good news is I have pictures of what he looked like alive and what he looked like dressed up in his suit at the funeral home. Um, they didn't show his hands. They said his hands had trauma. Okay. I don't understand trauma. I guess when you get shot or whatever, but you know, how many times did you shoot him? Somebody have a gun in their hand. Why can't you shoot them in the hand, the foot, let them drop the gun? You're going to shoot them till they're dead, till they fall out and they're dead? Or are you going to shoot them while you're chasing them from behind? Because since so a soldier, neighbor of mine said that motherfucker should be legal. But my point in all this is when he got released and got paroled from prison, he was associated with a motherfucking Wonder Woman bitch who he had no business associated with. And she wanted to use, abuse, and conquer his soul. And he didn't value his soul. Because for some reason, it's, it's not just men who have been where he's been in prison. You know, he paid for his crimes and everything he did. You know, this is a different situation. This is a crime of passion. But my point I'm trying to make is, the mental health of a black man is at stake. So, to all you brothers who get in parole and getting out, you need to watch yourself. Because I already know you're worth more inside than you are outside. It's hard for you to find work when you get out of there. And you hadn't had some of this and some of that in a while. And your eyes going everywhere. But, you know, be mindful of the company you keep. And a tip is... Don't let everybody know your business. Don't let nobody know how much money you make. And I'm speaking to the brothers who are on the inside, on the outside, even if you've never been on the inside. This is a message for all the brothers. The mental health of a black man is at stake. Okay? My father was a black man. He wasn't a father to me, but the motherfucker was still a black man. And his mental health was at stake. And because I'm spiritual and I was able to travel different dimensions and times and things, I warned him of some things I seen. The shadow man with the feathers and the long nose. Oh, yeah. I told him you need to watch the company you keep because the devil is on your tracks. He didn't pay attention. He did whatever he wanted to do. Because on one hand, I'm going to say it. He had coochie on his mind. And he already did time. And he wasn't going back. But one reaction, one bad reaction, one senseless, selfless impulse, selfish impulse, correct myself, cost you your life and your soul. So, you brothers, nominated brothers, y'all could be in all kind of relationships. Y'all could be with people who can spread it high and spread it wide. But let me tell you something. The mental health of the black man is at stake. Watch out for some of these dream stoppers. 
these motherfucking tricks who ain't got no kind of body. You know what I'm saying? You watch out for some of these motherfucking abusers and users of men. Because it's, 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 it's a particular kind of hood rat that I don't like. You know the man needs to rebuild his life after society. And your motherfucking ass already, I'm not claiming you as relative, but you already know we all know each other. So your motherfucking ass take it upon yourself to step in and step out the relationship. You broke his heart. And then you're going to file, file a police report. And you know all this information because I guess Pillow Talk, stop telling these women these men, these people in the street, all your business. Stop. The mental health of the black men is at stake. Y'all kill me with that. Everybody don't mention on your business. If you're going to have a father and son relationship, tell your father, your son, what you did with your life, what you learned from, how you're going to be there, be there. Motherfucker. Don't get caught up in no bullshit. And then, you know, everybody in his family wants to be mad at the situation. And I'm saying, y'all spent more time with him than I did. I got supervised visits with him in prison. And every time it was time for me to leave, I would bust out crying and I would lock my hands onto him. That man I cried behind. Man, I want there as a little child some very painful psych, 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 psychiatric bullshit. It's dead and gone. So I'm gonna tell all the brothers the mental health of the, the the mental health of the black man is at stake. I was traveling somewhere. I don't know if it was Thanksgiving or Christmas. I had a layover in Orlando, Florida. They had this black woman arguing with this black brother, fine looking black brother. And she said, give me my ticket. Cussing him out, if and all that and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm up here just looking like, why my people? I said to myself, maybe I'll be lucky I got somewhere to go. <laughs> because the way you're disrespecting and tearing down that brother in public, it reminds me of the documentation and the history, because this is not hearsay, of bull breaking. See, the motherfucking slave masters would get the biggest and the toughest and the strongest brothers, black brothers. You know, I don't call brothers, you know, just niggas or no thugs or shit like that. I call them brothers, because these were brothers. And they would break them down, sexually mutilate them, and kill them in front of the whole village. If you have something to communicate to a brother, sister, brother, whoever, communicate it to a brother with conversation with your words. No brother deserves to get his heart broken, to get his feelings hurt. You can communicate things. Don't you dare disrespect and dishonor and tear down a brother in my presence. I'm not going for it. The mental health of the black man is at stake. And as I told y'all motherfuckers, my soul ain't for sale. Um, and so I, I saw that going down, maybe for two minutes, and she ran off and went off, and he followed behind her. I said to myself, it made me look like I got somewhere to go, because I would look up in that brother's eyes and see the sparkle and take his ass from her. And it's not a sexual thing. It's an, it's, it's, it's an understanding. It's an understanding. Because... When you grow up and you're tearing down your black boys, you're tearing down your kids, you're tearing down his daddy, you're tearing down these brothers, what options do they have? Then they go out and they mix, breed, and populate with these other sisters coming up. I'm calling them other sisters. They're not really sisters, but they're a different breed. The white girls on TikTok and all these other uh, platforms and locations and these girls learning how to hula hoop and all this other shit 
They're dying to have purple and red and trying to get all in and stuff. You made him available. You tore him down. You talked about him. You said he was going to be like his father. Accept him for who he is and love him as he is and, and uplift him. The mental stake of a black man is at stake. And I was watching some Western Civilization media. I don't know what the woman's name was, but I believe she was Muslim or something. And um, she said, you know, the, the woman's place is not in front of the man, but it's beside the man. Not behind the man, but beside the man. You know, don't you think that the white man has still done the black man enough? And it goes beyond relationships. This motherfucking shit is all over the planet. Stop tearing down the black brothers. And then I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a little deeper. There is this this stereotype of a gay man being a punk. If you root if if you take the root back to you know what a punk is, someone who likes to be taken advantage of or whatever. I don't think anyone chooses to be taken advantage of. But people make everything so derogatory. And if a brother finds another brother and they're same gender loving, that doesn't make him a punk. He may identify as gay, queer, pansexual, whatever. You know, that's a brother. And I say this to say that the mental health of the black man is at stake. And if you disrespect and you tear down a brother and you look like him, he's going to go out there and find somebody else who may or may not look like him. They're going to invest some time in him and best believe they're going to take everything from him that you never invested. It can go one of two ways because you see they got these sisters coming up. Every year, they're getting darker. And they're learning the system. They're they, they, they making money off Instagram, reality TV. All of them, except for one, been with a brother. They have African-American kids, and they're white. But every year, they look in black. They have fillers and fake asses and all this other kind of shit because they know how to play with the mental health of the black man. I don't tune into that bullshit. My purpose in the culture conversation is to uplift, empower, and inform the black American community and community everywhere. Wake the fuck up. Stop tearing each other down. And, and I'll go a step further. When you disagree with your baby's fathers or your baby's mothers or the parents or the mothers or the fathers of your children, you have a grown-up conversation with the children on present because they don't need to see that stuff. Children are innocent. They don't need to be around all that bullshit. You loved whoever he was or whatever he did or whatever her did at one point. So be grown up enough to put your differences aside for the kids. You don't have to stay together, but you need to be in the child's life. Somebody need to pick up pampers. Somebody need to pick up a child from school. Somebody need to help the child with breakfast. Somebody need to help the child with homework. Somebody need to do something. Because children are innocent. And what happens is if the mom and daddy keep going at it, the child will be so antisocial and insecure. Child will be going through some shit, sending the bad ass child to school. Motherfucking child going to be causing all kind of problems. Then you have a Ted Bundy or a serial killer on the loose. Because mom and daddy and the parents were not able to communicate. And this foolishness happens specifically in the black community. It happens in all communities. But there is a social path. Because I've watched Forensic Files. I've watched Law and Order. I've watched the first 48 hours. I watch all that shit. 
and I'm woke. The mental health of the black man is at stake. Black brothers, don't lose your soul. Don't lose your life behind some bullshit. If somebody really cares about you, bring them around your family. Let your family check them out. Let your kids check them out for, for yourself just to see their vibe. And if you see any sneaky shit, I, I got to break that off. That, that ain't, it ain't what's up for me. Straight up. Because there are too many boys and girls growing up without their fathers. And they end up losing their life and their soul behind some bullshit. And I'm going to tell them other people. Had this boy going out with this white girl, went up to see her folks in Colorado. The boy disappeared in the lake. The girl said she don't know what happened. All of a sudden, he went up with you. He was alive, came back, found him in the river. I don't know what, what, what some of y'all have to gain from still praying on our black brothers. The mental state of the black brother, I don't know what they're putting on you. I don't know if it's voodoo, hoodoo, or what. But y'all better watch y'all motherfucking self. Y'all better watch y'all motherfucking self. These motherfuckers, some of them, not all the white folks, some of these motherfuckers hadn't got over losing their slaves. And which our motherfuckers should be doing. My people, my melanated people for Black History Month, you should be taking motherfucking ancestry tests. Because they have all these plantations, they throw in weddings and anniversaries and all kind of parties and galas and soirees. You need to motherfucking find out if you're related to some of the owners. So you could get a piece of that property and invest in generational ownership because that's what the white folks are doing. Don't become a part of the system. Pimp the system. That's what the motherfucking ass need to be doing for Black History Month. Getting educated on your people and what your people did. Your people created the pyramids and their own mathematical algorithms and melanated people have known for centuries to use oils and body waxes and different things. We don't use lotions. Motherfucking Europeans go all the way to Africa digging up our ancestors, King Tut, uh, the pharaohs and everybody chucking up their fingers and putting them in your lotion so some of y'all motherfuckers could be moisturized. Black folks don't need to use no lotion. That wasn't made for us. We use oils. We're melanated by the sun. All we have to do is sanitize, moisturize. Because every time we're in the sun, I, I don't know about anybody else, but you know, when I'm in the sun, I don't need no filter. It's melanin. The thick lips, it's melanin. The beautiful, smooth skin, cocoa butter, melanin, uh, 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 coffee bean. It's melanin. I'm blessed with it. And you can't have it and it ain't for soul. It ain't for, it ain't for sale. Sorry, it ain't for sale. So, th I think this pretty much concludes the culture conversation for today. And I'm going to say again, the mental health of the black man is at stake. My black brothers, whether you straight, Gay, queer, bisexual, whatever. Wake the fuck up. And don't mess around with no bullshit. Don't fool with no fools. And don't mess with no fools. And don't mess with no mess. Because there's a genocide and an agenda out to destroy y'all. The minority are the immigrants going to be in the Mexicans. There are black people all over the planet especially in America. They're everywhere. We're everywhere. And the white America is scared. But I tell you what y'all need to do. Y'all need to invest in ownership. You need to get woke. And you need to go out your mental health. Find somebody to talk to. And that's it. I'm going to cut this bitch.